This is Internet Marketing. Brought to you by Site Visibility at sitevisibility.com. This is Internet Marketing. Now, before we start today, we'd like to encourage anyone looking for help with their digital marketing to get in touch with Site Visibility. Whether you have a burning digital marketing question or you're looking for an agency to work with, we'd love to hear from you. So uh, you can give them a call on plus four four one two seven three seven three three four three three, or you can fill out the form at sitevisibility.co.uk contact. Alternatively, you can talk to either Scott or Sean via the live chat function on the site. They'd be happy to help. Now today I'm joined by Riaz Kanani, founder at Radiate B Two B. Riaz, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. And you're you're, uh, you're situated in a, in a uh, we we won't say live on air where you are, but a leafy suburb of London, aren't you? Ah, that's right. Yes, it's beautiful. I can almost see cows. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, there's no need to ask you what the weather's doing because I'm I'm also in the UK, not that far from London in Brighton. It's sunny but ruddy cold still, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I tell you what, it is. It is freezing. We're supposed to get snow. Yeah, yeah. We, week, we yes. might get snow this week. It's normal. By the way. People listening from other parts of the world, it's quite normal for us to get snow at Easter in the UK. <laughs> but anyway, this is not a, uh, a meteorological podcast. This is a podcast about internet marketing. Um, just before we get into the meat and potatoes, uh, which we'll reveal shortly, not literally meat and potatoes, but it, I think it's, it's going to be account-based marketing. But anyway, just tell us a little bit about yourself from Radiate B2B. Great name, by the yep. way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we, uh, I founded it a little over a year ago now, and I basically sat down with my co-founder and we'd been talking about marketing specifically b2b marketing and we basically thought if if we were doing b2b marketing we would do it completely differently Mm. myself and my co-founder spent something like 20 years building out marketing technology platforms Um, we sold one of them to silver pop and helped to build out their b2b marketing automation platform it must be a decade ago now yeah and all that automation and, and, and the sort of rise of content marketing that, that those platforms brought about were obviously brilliant. They were, they were great. They, they transformed the way we do B2B marketing today. The, the challenge, though, is that now more and more companies are, are doing it. And, and as the majority are doing it, it's getting harder and harder to cut through. We spent a year talking to marketing directors across the UK and Europe, and, and they were all saying the same thing. The they're creating more and more content marketing. It wasn't cutting through mm. all the noise because um, their competitors were were doing the same thing. Um, and so they're either having to increase their reach, so spending more money on on putting content in front of people, or um, investing in higher quality content marketing. Now, nothing wrong with investing in higher quality content marketing, but if that content marketing is is obviously increasing in cost, then the acquisition costs are rising. Yeah. And, and when that happens, you kind of want to find new ways to um, to connect, see if there's a, a better, more efficient way. So anyway, a long story short, um, that brought us to account-based marketing. We basically looked at it and we'd been using it ourselves. Um, so I'm sort of the marketing side of the business and, and Mike West and my co-founder is the, the sales side. And, and we've been using it in the various companies we'd work together in, and and it's a very manual, you know, it's a very manual process. It's been around for about a decade. Yeah. But what we realised was the the work that we'd been doing at data science consultancies and and um, and the like. We basically saw that we could scale those approaches and actually make it affordable to the majority rather than the few, which is is where it had been before. Yeah. Um, so, hence Radiate B two B. That's 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 um, what we're all about. Really, we're, we're we're an agency today. We have technology as well. We are looking to completely change the way B two B marketers um, deliver their marketing. So, you know, no small claim, but that's what we want to do. So it's, it's interesting. So obviously, B two B has been around since the dinosaurs. Well, not literally the dinosaurs, but but for a while. Uh, this notion of account based marketing. Let's just go into that because um, just remind us the sort of the definition of account-based marketing and yep. why people are talking about it today. Okay, um, so it's been around since the late nineties. It 
which is which is an awful long time um and it's it's basically about marketing to a market of one so if you are selling multi-million pound deals mm. and you know on that account you would put a marketer a field salesperson etc cetera, etc cetera, and they'd be working away to try and figure out ways to to get into into that account that that company um and you know it, it's the great thing about it, obviously, is you can completely tailor your messaging to that individual account, which it, which obviously is as, as good as you can get. It, it, it's sort of the 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 perfect scenario for for a marketer where you you have complete control on 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 what a um, an account in this case sees and hears, yeah. um, and, and of course, when you get that right, then then you do get cut through. Um, the challenge for almost everybody else in the world is that. We can't afford to hire that many people for every single one of our prospects, um, and so so it, it sort of stayed there as a niche marketing strategy for a long time. So I think I, w- I would imagine then that with that sort of model, the uh, challenge is scalability, isn't it? How how do you sort of adopt a scalable um, account based marketing approach, uh, taking advantage specifically of inbound? Yeah. So um, so. In in our case, um, we start with looking at ways to use artificial intelligence to use the the large amounts of data that are available on the one side, and on the other side, when it comes to um, integrating inbound um, marketing into the mix, it's obviously all about content marketing, and and, and you know bringing prospects, leads as they are then into into your sphere of influence, and 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 actually then trying to persuade them that that they should pick up the phone and, and talk to you. Mm. Now, when it comes to account based marketing, content marketing is still absolutely critical to the to the mix since the the way people buy b2b platforms hasn't changed at all you know since since the since the internet came online you know 10 20 years ago mm. um, people shifted from being very reliant on sales teams to to actually doing research online and then later on in the buying cycle um, contacting the company and, and that hasn't changed mm. but what has changed is obviously a large amount of content is now hitting those prospects, and they're all from vendors, um, or you know, all for people trying to sell to you, and 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 you know, it's hard for the recipient to actually figure out what's true, what's not true, what's what's um, you know, what what's right. So, account-based marketing can take that content and and layer in a level of personalization. So so net. Uh, Whereas before we used to see large amounts of content that, that they're generic, they're they're trying to make a, you know mud stick on the wall type stuff where you're, you're trying to hit every single point in this article uh, or in this white paper um, in the hope that um, it fits with something that the the reader is is a it has a need for but of course with account based marketing we can actually go straight to the point and actually say well actually we know these are the sorts of things that you're you know grappling with or, or you would benefit from and so this is what we think you should listen to so you can level up your inbound by uh, and, and you know turn it into a, an abm strategy by by more personalizing the content and then and then automating it obviously yeah so the other side of that personalization um is that you know, similar to uh, the insurance um, industry, where when you get to your point where you need to buy some insurance, you've got a list, consciously or subconsciously, of of half a dozen or so companies that you want to talk to. Mm-hmm. And and one of the other things that account-based marketers with approaches can can allow you to to do is to actually say, I want this set of accounts of these companies i'm going to put advertising only in front of those companies with each one individually tailored so that when they see the advert it's you know their problem or their benefit that they're that they can see and then when they come through to the landing page it then personalizes on the fly to exactly match the messaging that was on the advert um which dramatically transforms performance of, of both you know, conversion as well as acceleration of the of the sales funnel. So what about the technology behind this then, Riaz? How does the technology work of sort of like presenting a sort of quite a specialised uh, sort of marketing page to a sort of particular small group of people? 
Yeah, so one of the one of the big things that's really allowing ABM to, to take off is, is the, the amount of data that's available online now for, for marketers to take advantage of in real time. So so whether it's from knowledge of IP data or whether it's cookies, when someone comes to the site, we can place a, a JavaScript component on that page, which uh, when when the recipient arrives, we can say, okay, we know this person is from this specific account or this type of industry, and then we can completely change the page so that it looks like, you know, it looks it looks like it's meant for that specific account. So, so you know, let's say a, a um, I don't know a, a technology company, let's say IBM lands on that page if if ibm was one of your named accounts that you really you know it was it was in your top few that you want to target mm. um it could show case studies that were similar to the problems ibm's facing or um it could address ibm directly if, if you really you know if it made sense to do so mm. um likewise if it, if it was you know one of the the sort of larger group of accounts where you know it doesn't warrant the investment um in completely tailored accounts you could say well okay let's say it's someone from the telecoms industry you could transform the page to be suitable to the telecoms industry for example and so you know it just gets rid of those hurdles where someone from the telecoms industry is having to you know typically go through through retail orientated content because that's often the, the the sort of biggest the biggest sort of um, content for, for technology companies at least uh, that you have to wade through to find the the right content for you now let's talk about sales and marketing because i know that that's a that's a big area that people often ask questions about the two different uh, activities how do they sort of uh, work together with uh, sort of account-based marketing Sales and marketing working together has been a topic that goes back decades. Um, and, and I remember when we were rolling out marketing automation in, in the UK, as well as you know, around the world, uh, one of our big things was, was around how marketing automation would help sales and marketing teams come together. And, and, and they did. And, and, and when, when those teams did come together, performance um, you know, really did um, increase dramatically and and you know that to some degree there's no surprise right you put you put two teams that really are working together to to win business when you align them and make them aware of what each other's doing that's that's obviously going to to help things the thing that we didn't realize a decade ago with the marketing automation platforms is that what what it also did was it created a metric called the mql and the sql so the marketing qualified lead and the sales qualified lead yeah which had this this wonderful effect over time as as all those teams became more and more sophisticated it had this great effect of, of marketers working towards the mql and then stopping and the sales guys picking up the sq the, you know the mql and turning it into an sql and, and then not and off they went and never the two should discuss post that point um, which right. which is complete it's complete madness i mean that's that's not the way it should be but it's what we see happening time and time again the the beauty of account based marketing is you know in the same way as it's moving b2b marketing on another stage actually it's moving sales and marketing alignment on another stage as well so the sales team actually is coming in you know earlier than the mql stage so at the beginning and saying like well, we these are the accounts that we think are the sweet spot for this particular business and marketing is obviously chiming in going okay so 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 why is you know why is it that particular account and and and, and starting to put together a, a formula of sorts that allows you to you know scale that list over time because obviously you know the idea here is we're going to close that list and then how do we expand it mm-hmm. um, then you know from that point on, actually right the way through to the close of the co- contract itself, and often beyond actually, the the sales team continues to work with marketing. So so it becomes, okay, we've attracted their attention. Maybe it's, it's through that account-based advertising programs. They're coming in, they're consuming this content. It's then all about building a relationship. And so, you know, it's not necessarily about picking up the phone and saying, you know, you're in the buying phase let's have this conversation it's now about building that relationship um, and then feeding back the results of those interactions to marketing so marketing can adjust and adapt its uh, marketing programs to then close the account over time and so what you end up with is this 
really well aligned sales and marketing team and then that does deliver on the the performance increases that that we saw when that happens now what about timing riaz with i mean i'm just thinking about companies that might be thinking of adopting an account-based approach um is timing important i mean when when should they be thinking about adopting sort of account-based marketing yeah so uh, the obvious first one is is when when you're failing to get your message across and you're having to spend more and more on acquisition through either reach or or investment in content um as i as i talked about right at the very beginning but the the other sort of occasions where you know you can really get a head start on your your competition is, is when those industries change you know things like GDPR, the changing banking regulations, Brexit, of course, all those things mean that you can you can really connect and start having conversations with companies um, that an ABM approach really, really works well with. Yeah. And lastly, you know, if you're really trying to accelerate growth within existing clients and new business, I touched on it um, a minute ago, so ago, when I said that the marketing and sales teams work right through to close, actually, it can go beyond close because, you know, and, and in fact, the your existing clients are, are it's often an account based approach already, yeah. but it's typically only handled by the relationship teams or the account teams. And actually, bringing marketing in and working closely together there can dramatically improve your abilities of of expanding not just within the the department that you're working in and so accelerating your products but actually more broadly geographically or um, across other departments or, or, or brands. So we covered a lot today. What would your top tip or key takeaway be for our audience today, Riaz? I would say that account-based marketing, um, what it really does is it forces you to identify your best target clients Mm -hmm. you've got to sit down and think about where your sweet spot is it's it's no longer just about pulling in any client who who you know may well pay you some revenue but actually is is taking up a ton of time inside the business and therefore costing you a lot of money so Mm -hmm. it identifies you your best target clients and then it's the foundation stone for everything else across the business so it flows from that across into sales marketing customer success and even even product that's fantastic well thank you so much for joining us today how can our listeners find out more about you and more about radiate b2b there's obviously our website so radiate b2b.com so that's b the number two and Mm b.com and then via our social channel so we're on twitter we're on facebook and linkedin um you can find us on all of those just under radiate b2b fantastic so thanks riaz and thanks for listening everyone the show notes are in the usual place site visibility.co.uk slash i am podcast if you're enjoying the show please leave us a review because then we can sort of uh, know how we're doing and help more and more people uh, we're always open to questions and suggestions for future topics so if you want to email us it's podcast at sitevisibility.co.uk you can tweet at site visibility we also have a linkedin group site visibility group on linkedin so that's all from me andy and it's all from riaz thank you and we'll see you next time on internet marketing